Have you ever heard of the only successful revolution led by black slaves in history? Greetings everyone, I'm Chris. Today, we'll journey through the tumultuous history of Haiti, a Caribbean island. We'll uncover how undicated and underarmed black slaves managed to overthrow their white masters and the legacy of the nation they built. If you find this video interesting, please support us by hitting the like button. Now, let's get started. About 230 years ago, Europeans ruled most of the Americas, and a system of slavery was widespread, where people were forcibly brought from Africa to work. Our story unfolds on an island, divided between saint domingue controlled by France to the west, and a Spanish territory to the east, in the area called saint domingue on the west side, which was controlled by France, the largest rebellion by black slaves in history took place. At the time, there were three main types of people living in saint domingue The whites, who owned plantations and made a living by exploiting slaves, the free blacks, who were either mixed-race whites and blacks or former slaves who were set free for some reason, and the blacks who were forced to work as slaves. Of these, the black population was by far the largest of the total population. Only about one-tenth were whites and free blacks combined. The black population harboring resentment due to the brutal conditions of slavery and systemic oppression greatly outnumbered the whites. This demographic imbalance kept the white population in constant fear of an uprising. In the midst of this situation, a major historical event occurred in France, the owner of saint domingue During the French Revolution, the King of France lost his power and freedom and equality for all French citizens were declared. This proclamation was naturally delivered to saint domingue a French territory, and unrest spread among the inhabitants. Some black slaves believed they could gain freedom, since saint domingue was part of France. Meanwhile, certain whites felt they couldn't profit without slaves and desire independence from France to maintain slavery. Additionally, there were blacks who felt that if independence occurred, the whites wouldn't have France to guide them. The free blacks believed that if this occurred, it would jeopardize not only the rights of slaves, but also their own. The proclamation of freedom and equality in France stirred up a variety of thoughts in Saint Domingue. Then one person made a move, Vincent Oge. He was a former slave and a free black of mixed race. He claimed that the French declaration made him fully equal to whites and he demanded the right to participate in politics from the leader of saint domingue However, the leader refused. Oge rebelled against the denial of his rights, but was caught and executed. While he did not revolt specifically for the freedom of black slaves, his cruel execution became a major motivation for the slaves of saint domingue to rise in revolt. A few months after Oge's execution, slaves across saint domingue suddenly revolted, when attacked in mass, the whites, greatly outnumbered, were helpless. No matter how many weapons they possessed, the wave of rebellion spread rapidly throughout the country, and the slaves who gained the upper hand began to fight to win their freedom by burning down the plantation, where they had been forced to work and killing many whites, including their masters, in order to avenge their past grudges. Saint Domingue was thus plunged into a civil war, but at this point, an even more troublesome group emerged, the Spanish army. Spain, which controlled the eastern side of the island, took advantage of the chance to invade Saint Domingue. The Spanish objective was, of course, to occupy Saint Domingue, but the slaves had the common goal of driving the French off the island. And with the Spanish army on their side, they overwhelmed the French in Saint Domingue. Despite facing challenges, the slaves were united under the leadership of one individual responsible for their success, to St. Louverture. He was a former slave who served a relatively kind master, and he used the education he had acquired as a slave to lead a group of black slaves. The black slave group led by Tess Saint eventually took control of the northern part of St. Domingue. Then a mixtress free black group took control of the southern part of St. Domingue, and even the British invaded and took over the coastal area of St. Domingue. Recognizing the strategic importance of Saint Domingue, the French took action amidst the chaos. France, wishing to avoid at all costs the capture of Saint Domingue by foreign powers such as Spain and England, 
formally declared the emancipation of its slaves in order to win over the black slave groups to its side. The blacks were skeptical about this declaration, but Toussaint, the leader of the black slave group, heard it and turned to the French side. This was because his main goal was to abolish slavery, and he thought that, betting on this French declaration would have a better chance of achieving his goal than being ruled by the British or Spanish who were negative toward the abolition of slavery. With this objective in mind, Tussink continued his rapid march toward victory and the complete abolition of slavery in Saint-Domingue. Not only did he defeat the free black groups opposed to France and the English and Spanish armies, but he also invaded the Spanish territory east of Saint-Domingue and freed the slaves there. After gaining control of the entire island, the French declaration to free the slaves lost its significance to Toussaint. Toussaint decided to create a new country in Saint-Domingue, believing that if he took the lead and ruled Saint-Domingue, he would be free from France and slavery would never return again. However, there was someone in France who would not allow it. Napoleon. Napoleon, who was the leader of France at the time, sent a large army to thwart Toussaint's attempt and make Saint-Domingue a French territory again. The French army at this time denied the restoration of slavery, and those among the black slave groups who had doubts about Toussaint's methods became more and more on the side of the French army. Outnumbered, Toussaint was promised safety and the continued abolition of slavery if he surrendered, leading him to make that decision However, this was a trap set by the French army. After surrendering, he was arrested and taken to France, where he died in a French prison. The French reasserted control of Saint-Domingue and for a time, peace prevailed, but it was not enough. However, as time went on, it was revealed that Napoleon had plans to restore slavery in Saint-Domingue. And a group of black slaves, led by a former subordinate of Toussaint, revolted against France once again. Moreover, with the addition of British support to this rebellion, the French army was defeated in battle. Finally, Saint-Domingue declared its independence. Thus was born Haiti, the world's first nation of former black slaves. The former subordinates of Toussaint, who led this last rebellion, remained at the head of the arrangement, executing the remaining Frenchmen and prohibiting whites from owning property and land in order to prevent slavery from returning, and in retaliation for the treatment they had received as slaves. While one might assume this brought peace to Haiti, the reality was far more complex. The country was at odds between former black slave groups and free black groups. Reparations had to be paid to France in order to gain recognition of independence. And since the society was originally a slave society, commerce did not exist, and knowledge and technology were inadequate making it impossible to produce anything. Under these circumstances, it became very difficult to prosper in a country ravaged by war. Since then, Haiti has faced the United States occupation, endured astonishing dictatorships, suffered a major earthquake, and grappled with various other challenges. In response to this situation, there are many people in Haiti today who are proud of their independence from France but also say that it was too early for them to become independent. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more insightful content. Take care and see you in the next video. Goodbye!